okay so this is the k means algorithm uh, right and this is like relatively smaller code but there's some stuff that you know you really have to understand uh, and i'll explain that as i go through it okay once again the same stuff uh, the first thing we are doing is importing our uh, data set which is once again the same data set our digital data set so we are getting that from uh, sklearn.datasets we are importing load digits function calling that to create a dig object and this dig object contains an attribute data uh, which is our data set of course so once again our data set is a matrix which contains arrays of length 64 uh, so this is the first array, second array, so on, and these arrays are basically uh, the vectors that our that are our data elements. Okay, cool. So let's get right into it. Let's get into the function k means. So it takes three arguments. Uh, although the third argument is already predefined, so we are taking hundred iterations. So this is the number of updates it does. So unlike k centers, which only does k iterations this algorithm can do infinite i mean it actually requires infinite iterations to be giving the optimum solution or you know the solution which is a local minimum um but yeah over here we're just doing the 100 iterations um data is of, of course our data set just like in the previous case in our k center algorithm k is the number of k centers or number of centers just like that in this case centers and centroids are basically the same thing and you will see why the centers are also centroids of the clusters um, so we are creating a cost list just like the last time and we'll be appending our uh, cost you know to the list of course so uh, we are doing that over here cost dot sub cost dot append and p dot sum c and i'll explain what c is okay but before all of this let's get into a bit of maths um, say you have been given a bunch of random data points and you want to figure out a point which is having the least sum of square distances um, so the least sum of square distances from all of these points right so this is a point a variable point in fact you're looking at so you know that you'll be moving uh, this point and then you want to figure out okay so this point has this distance from this point and this distance from that point and so on and what we could do is just square all of these distances and add them up and then figure out okay what's what's the position of this red point such that that sum is the minimum so we want to minimize this sum summation of so let's say that this point is x vector so you want to uh, minimize this thing summation of x vector minus vi vector uh, the square of that basically so the more of that square same stuff come on uh, and this is summed over i so i represents the index of uh, these black dots you know right so i will be going from 0 to n or whatever right ms1 in programmer notation anyway this is what you want to minimize uh, what we could do is we could write this whole expression as x squared plus bi squared minus 2 x vector dot bi vector and then sum that basically so summation of x squared i times of that that's just n times of x squared where n is the number of black dots plus summation of bi squared uh, this thing is more or less a constant okay and so like it's not dependent on x that's what i'm saying and then minus all of that so x vector can be taken out because that's a constant with respect to i so the inside will be summed up so just minus 2x vector out uh, for dot as well because dot is the linear operator distributive or addition that's what i'm saying uh, and then you sum vi vector right so the sum of vi vector that's basically okay you know what just keep it like that just keep it as sum of vi vector in fact okay so that is uh, the thing so really we just want to minimize this okay cool uh yeah let's just remove that and write this again okay cool uh right so first of all let's group these up so then this will basically be uh so you take an n out and it's just x square minus 
टू एक्स वैक्टर डॉटेड विथ दिस समेशन ऑफ वी आई वैक्टर अपॉन एन स्टफ सो दिस इज अनादर वैक्टर विच लेज इज कॉल दैट एज वी सी ओ एम ना यू ऑफ द पीपल हु लर्न फिजिक्स ऑफ कोर्स नो वट आई एम गेटिंग एट बट या अगेन दिस प्लस समेशन ऑफ वी आई स्क्वेयर राइट सो नाउ वी वी आर गोइंग टू डू समथिंग लाइक कंप्लीट द स्क्वेयर सो दिस इज बेसिकली लाइक एन टाइम्स ऑफ एक्स स्क्वेयर माइनस you know so you got minus 2 expected as all of that but add vcm square and subtract vcm square from this i should say n times vcm square because you have this n over here and then group and all that so then this basically becomes x not x square suppose the x vector x vector minus vcm vector uh squared right then minus n vcm uh squared i think so yeah okay plus the summation of vi squared right yeah uh that's what this thing will be okay so <clears throat> what was i saying right so all of this is independent of x vector really the only dependent part is this thing so we have to basically maximize this and also vcm is more or less a constant right it's been on the data set basically um so when is x vector minus vcom that thing squared uh you know maximum uh maximum or do we want to minimize it so yeah we want to actually minimize this thing but fine so when is this thing going to be the minimum well this is a square of some vector which is always bigger than or equal to 0 um so its minimum value is just 0 and that happens whenever x vector is equal to vcm vector now people who are from probability would say that okay don't write this vcm get out of the you know physics notation instead write it as mu so mu vector is uh, so like mu is the mean of our data set right and what we are actually trying to minimize is the variance of our data set um right and it would be the variance if x vector equal to mu vector but yeah basically it's something like the variance that we want to minimize right um yeah so it's no surprise that this happens when x is exactly the centroid that you get the minimum cost of our cluster cuz you know it's at the center yeah so like philosophically it makes sense anyway let's not talk about all of that uh, basically the maths tells us that okay just take the centroid as the optimal position for your center if you are given the data for a cluster right so now let's get into the algorithm the algorithm is pretty straightforward really you just choose random points um as your clusters right and then let's say that these black points are your you know data set right so you have chosen these red points let's let's so say you know you got three data points or like four data points oh, sorry uh, four clusters so then what you do is of course you group these so maybe these will be all group together right so like you cluster that's what i should say maybe these will be clustered together i don't know how it's going to be clustered whatever maybe like these will be clustered you get the thing right okay so once you have clustered that um yeah so you have found these clusters cool but this centroid uh so like this point which formed this cluster that's not it's it's not its optimal position it could have been at a better position to give a smaller cost for that cluster so why not just to move it to that position so when you move it to a better position so say this was the centroid of this you know cluster right then you move it to a better position in that case the cost of this cluster which is the variance of this i think it's the variance it's the sum of the square distances from the center okay that's a very big thing to say but yeah that thing decreases and it actually becomes the minimum right so in both of these steps your cost is decreasing first step you just did the clustering and in the second step you improve your position of clusters but now what you can do is recluster so forget that this was belonging to this green cluster and this recluster right because there could be that you know some points go to a different cluster than they were uh, previously assigned to because the centroids moved or the centers i should say moved to the centroids position right so that will update our clusters and if you keep doing that iteratively i mean in each of these steps 
reassigning clusters as well as um, reassigning the centroids you are decreasing your cost the cost of the whole uh, whole clustering that is right and of course the whole clustering is just the sum of um, some of the costs of individual clusters right so you are in fact decreasing that work it out come on do that little bit of math i'm not gonna write it down so once you are sure that that's what's happening you can rely on this algorithm because it's basically just that it's just doing these two steps iteratively and that gives you you know this like this implementation okay so now we know how this algorithm works let's go to the implementation Um, so first n is data dot shape zero, just like the last example. It's the number of elements in a data set. Centroids is uh, so randomly initialized, and we are taking from uniform random distribution. We could do better using Gaussian distribution, but it's just what has been given to us. So we are asked to use a uniform distribution, and that's why using np dot random dot choice n comma k comma replace equal to false. Um, yeah. Right, so basically, like taking a slice of our data, which is which is uh, which is k long. That's how I would say it contains k elements, k data elements, basically. Okay, and yeah, okay, this <laughs> underscore. So for underscore range, so underscore is just like some double variable. We don't really care about this. We're just iterating. That's the point. So after updates, number of iterations, you'll be getting something. So what's happening each in each uh, iteration is this. You are creating this distances uh, variable, which is np dot linear algebra dot norm data colon comma new np dot new axis comma colon. So this is the data to be from the um, from the k center clustering basically minus centroids axis equal to negative one. So first, so for let me let me explain what this thing is. Um, our data, as you know, is just a list of sixty four long arrays. So first colon says that okay. You know, you take all of these elements, group them again, and then create a new array, right? So, just the colon, well, that would have just created this array again, right? But now you're putting a new axis over there. So what that does is it puts a new axis uh, around the elements of this selection. It's kind of weird to explain, but whatever. And yeah, this is what you get. And then you are saying, okay, the next colon. Will go for you know the elements inside of that, and it will once again take all of them and then recreate the array, something like that. So taking a slice, more or less. Um, I shouldn't say it's a slice. It's not like a slice anymore. It's just the whole array itself. But yeah, what we're doing is basically converting um, your 64 comma nothing. So it, the shape of the inside array was just 64 comma nothing, right? So you're converting this to um, you know one comma 64 basically. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So this is the first part, um, the slice of the data thing, or you know, whatever you did to it. Uh, yeah, and then minus centroids. So what is centroids again? Is just this thing. So it's you know, it's the data. Yeah, thing. Uh, how do I even say this? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain. How do I even say this? Uh, yeah, whatever. So I'm gonna say it like, like this. Okay. So, so our centroids is a matrix, or you can think of it as a, uh, it's a list of arrays as well. So it's a list of 64 long arrays. Um, how many of these 64 long arrays? Well, k of these. So k is of 64 long arrays. Uh, and this is going to be broadcasted to this array. Now, how do you broadcast an array like that? Well, check its dimensions. It's it's basically k times 64, right? That's what this guy's dimension is. And what about this guy's dimension? It's something like 179. That's n value basically. Or you could just say n itself. I'm I'm not sure if that's actually the value of n. N comma 1 comma 64, right? That's the that's the shape of this array. So the way it's broadcasted is that it compares uh, these things. So these two are the same. Okay, cool. Then it compares these things. Oh, this one can be made into K if we just replicate the inside arrays 
k times right so what numpy does is that it stacks up these arrays k times so you take this individual element it's looking like that right and then you replicate it k times right and then of course you like put all of that in a single bracket so you just want to make that 1 into 64 you don't want a new axis or anything so this is what it does it takes this and it replicates it a bunch of times to get this thing so if this contained like some something 1 2 3 then this 1 2 3 is replicated k times so let's say k equal to 3 then it, this is what the matrix would be right so it broadcasts it broadcasts it like that and then it looks for the last one so this is n and it's nothing over here so numpy thinks okay well i can make this n by you know uh, repeating this thing n times so that's what it does it takes this thing and it repeats it n times and it puts all of that in the new you know array thing and there you go those are your new arrays which are compatible with each other and then what you do with it at is just you subtract it so basically what you end up getting is just you know this array so like th uh, these are the actual elements of our uh, you know broadcasted array the first broadcast broadcast array so this minus the element from the centroids array which is i mean it's just going to be the same element again and again and again so just this thing this list of numbers sorry this, this list of 64 long arrays um minus this list of 64 long arrays yeah that's what our elements of uh, this new array will be right uh, so this is supposed to be 64 long although you just wrote three of these over here so in the end what you get after doing all of this is just this list which contains matrices uh, which are of size 64 comma k no actually it's k comma 64 so this thing is k comma 64 this thing is also k comma 64 whatever and then n of such things right so this is what you eventually get this is your distances matrix list whatever this thing is and array basically um, right uh, and once again what are these elements really uh, these elements if you were to write it in mathematical notation um, this is this thing actually just is just this thing it's um, it's how do I say this is this thing c0 vector minus or I should say v vector minus c0 vector okay so v 0 vector minus c0 vector and this thing is v1 vector minus c uh, no it's v0 vector v0 vector minus c1 vector and then v0 vector minus c2 vector and so on so that's this first thing and what about this one well this thing is v1 vector minus c0 vector v1 vector once again okay minus c1 vector and so on so basically each row in these matrices contains the vector difference between the ith index data set so the, the ith index data element and uh, and the centroid so you know the centroid corresponding to which row of the matrix this is and i is just the just the index of this matrix in the big array that makes sense right okay yeah so that's what distance is what's labels label is np dot arc main distance is x is equal to 1 x is equal to 1 basically means take these inside matrices and apply and we got argument on that right um yeah oh okay actually uh, skipped a bit of it so this is not distances <laughs> sorry this is not distances instead you have another operation left on it np dot linear algebra dot norm and you are doing it at x equal to negative one x is equal to negative one what that means is you just take the innermost axis right in this case the innermost axis is basically this array because like this will be an array come on so that is the innermost axis and then you just do norm of that which is basically like the mod of this thing or the norm or whatever you want to call it so yeah it's just the norm of this and now you convert this into this so now this has dimensions um, k comma nothing right so it's just k it's a normal array of k elements uh, and the elements are like this v not minus c0 okay and this thing is v not vector minus c1 vector and so on right uh, yeah uh, so now you have column vectors like that and that's your distances matrix 
okay so that's your distances and then you do labels which is np.argmin distances x is equal to 1 so x is equal to 1 that looks at the inner axis so this is the actual list that you will get you have a bunch of column vectors in our el as our elements you take x is equal to 1 that is you are looking at each column vector and thinking of you know taking argmin over that axis uh, remember argmin actually does everything point wise when it compares point wise, I should say element wise for like and it does it in a kind of recursive way but whatever over here all you need to know is that you take these elements you figure out which index has the smallest one right all these numbers which index is the smallest number and thus you get a list which gives us basically numbers this list contains numbers and these numbers basically tell us which cluster uh, does our element the ith element for example so this is our ith element and maybe let's say this thing is zero so that's basically saying that the ith element is belonging to the zeroth cluster and this being zero basically means that uh, the ith element in this original matrix uh, that was a column vector of course well that had the zeroth element as the minimum uh, element in this column vector all right so yeah that's your labels now c is np dot minimum distances comma x is equal to one squared so c is the cost of it then you're just appending this c thing to your cost uh yeah so you actually figured out what the labels are all that's left to do is just calculating the cost so now you know like which cluster does every point belong to so the way you figure out the cost of the whole cluster is just sum all of the um, all of the what do we call it all of the distances to the centers right yeah which can be done easily by just doing np dot minimum distances x is equal to 1 square right wait why is there a minimum word there uh, distances x is equal to 1 distances is this thing oh okay uh, this is like really bad actually you shouldn't have done it like that but whatever so the thing is over here you used arc minimum and that gave you indices what if you just wanted the minimum values that's why i'm using np not minimum over here again instead of using the labels list itself but yeah it's basically the same thing i should have done that it's like unnecessary but then again the complexity is almost the same it's just you know doing the same thing that i did over there again not a big deal the same complexity just two times the work okay that's your c that's the cost and of course you have to square that because we're talking about distances the actual thing is the variance so you have to square that uh right yeah oh and uh by the way when you are squaring it actually goes element wise so this c is in fact not a number instead it's a it's a list or, or an array of course n dimensional it's like numpy array right it's a numpy array and what it basically is is that instead of these labels which are indices you just get the values themselves that's what c is then you square every element in c that gives you the square distances and then you sum that so that's the actual cost and then you update the centroids so for i in range k centroids i equal to np dot mean data label c so this is <laughs> quite a bit to understand so first of all what's label equal to equal to i that's just that's just uh, an array of booleans so it's true false true false all of that and then data is being sliced with that list so labels is basically containing um, the labels right so the numbers which determine the cluster which cluster does your element belong to so that equal to equal to i that does it element wise so let's say that the first element belong to zero and you are doing labels equal to equal to zero then this would turn out to be true that yeah okay this was actually equal to zero if this was one this is false and so on so data square brackets labels equal to, equal to i what that's what's that doing is that it's just taking a slice of the data and it gives only those elements which are um, in the ith cluster right so then we are doing np dot mean of that x is equal to zero so once again our data is just a list of vectors so here i'm drawing it as column vectors you can draw it as row vectors or whatever you want so we are slicing this data and now the data that you get is uh, just containing the ith cluster data elements only so then you just do the mean of that 
right and that basically gives you the centroid for the ith cluster and that's how you update these centroids so the centroids was just this uh, just this thing right yeah uh, so yeah like initially they, they were defined randomly but now you are updating them so now centroids are being defined like that okay and then you of course do it for uh, updates number of iterations and then you return centroids labels cost so in this case updates is 100 that was also the default value in the function itself but whatever so uh, okay once again the underscore over here so we're not talking about the labels anymore i mean we don't actually care about the labels at all because really we just want to plot this so c comma labels it's supposed to be but then you didn't care so whatever comma cost equal to so cost uh, once again i didn't actually tell you about it so it's not necessary to be graphing cost at all but i'm just doing it to show what's actually going on uh so yeah you could like completely delete everything that's related cost over here and could run perfectly fine okay so c comma this underscore thing comma cost that's equal to k mean uh so dig data that's just the data set that we're dealing with uh comma 10 so that's our k value so you're doing k clusters comma updates that's 100 basically right uh, so now C is basically the list of all our centroids, right? Centroids are of course 64 dimensional uh, vectors. And then you are splitting these 64 dimensional vectors uh, to get 8 by 8 matrices in this for loop. And you are showing that using M show. And this is the final output that you get. So centers after 100 updates, you get these. And these look very close actual numbers right this looks very close to 2 very close to 3 or 8 or okay this is kind of weird it got confused between 3 and 8 because like those were pretty close i guess looks more like 8 though oh so 3 is over here so yeah this actually did get confused but it looks more like 8 so that's 8 hopefully then this is 0 pretty noticeable and this is very distinct from normal numbers so that's why it's very noticeable then you got 7 and then whatever this thing is 6 5 4 9 3 so this is just a uh, is just 100 iterations so you could have run this for more iteration and then you would have got hopefully a more refined result and this is cost versus iterations so initially the cost is going to like 10 power 6 order which is yeah and it's really high and then it just drops it drops to you know something like 1.2 times 10 power 6 or something like that oh actually it's not a big drop it just got half of something um so it could have dropped more i guess but yeah it actually got like half so that's the improvement i guess and then it's gonna take quite a bit of time for it to actually reach a local minimum but yeah uh that's the game in algorithm and you know what just for the sake of it i'm actually gonna run this so uh, that's probably somewhere in matplotlib yeah Oh, nice. Okay, I was actually working on it. That's why it's over here. So, so this is the k-means algorithm, um, and you're doing it at a pitch equal to hundred. Uh, yeah, let's run that. It does take some time sometimes. Okay, it's running. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The figure is ready. So these are the things that it returned. Oh, it's still doing some stuff. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, and these look pretty interesting. And these look different from the previous example I showed you because you know you are uh, randomly picking the starting k centers, right? And let's you know increase the number of updates. Let's say you update for I don't know 500 iterations. And by the way, each iteration takes almost the same amount of time. So this is basically just five times the amount of time. And if you are patient enough, like, I'm gonna run this. You will have to wait because, come on, you're iterating over a very big amount of data. So now these look even more distinct. Although there is this weird thing, which I have no idea what it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be eight, but it got messed up really bad. Uh, but now these, clusters like so the center sorry so now these centers look uh, you know very much like normal numbers don't they yeah I mean previously too they were actually looking pretty much like normal numbers but now they look a bit more like normal numbers 
so this is one you can just make it out five nine six seven it's two yeah it's look, looks like two actually four three zero and it's supposed to be eight but then it got confused between a bunch of numbers because eight is i mean think about it eight is close to one and two and seven and nine and bunch of other numbers actually so yeah it perfectly has a reason to get confused so there you go that's k means algorithm basically okay so then that's it i'll see you guys next video bye